Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Let us first call upon the representative director of the organizer of this conference, Japan Association of New Economy, and chairman and CEO of Rakuten, Mr. Hiroshi Mikitani, for opening remarks. Hey, everyone, how are you? Good afternoon. And again, this year, thank you very much for coming to the New Economy Summit 2017 hosted by Jane. I would like to briefly explain to you what we do at Jane, Japan Association of New Economy in English, and then thereafter, I will be speaking about the purposes of NEST, New Economy Summit 2017 in Japanese. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. As a representative director of uh, Japan Association of New Economy, Shikenzai Nenme, I am extremely honored to welcome you to this year's New, Year, uh, New Economy Summit, uh, Tokyo. Let me uh, share and explain about what is Shinkeizai Nenme, or in English, Japan Association of New Economy. The, we started uh, Jane, Japan Association of New Economy, in 2012. So this has been, this is our fifth year. Uh, and uh, we are very honored to share what we are doing and, and our progress and so forth. Mission of Jane is really to revitalize uh, Japanese industry uh, and Japanese economy. <clears throat> We have uh, three areas we focus on, innovation, entrepreneurship, and globalization. <clears throat> we offer a lot of policy proposals to the government, the Kasumiga Seki and Nagata Cho, and carry out intellectual and uh, enlightening activities. Now, we have over 500 member companies as a member of uh, Japan Association of New Economy. We are very, very proud. We came up with a very strong proposal to Japanese government, which is called uh, Japan Ahead. But basically, we have three proposals. One is really making Tokyo as a new Silicon Valley of Asia, which we believe will be able to generate 100 trillion yen of the uh, extra uh, economic uh, impact. The second is really <clears throat> advancing Tokyo as smart city and really transforming Japan as a smart nation. More adoption of information technologies, Internet of Things, autonomous technology, and so forth and so forth. We believe we will be able to create. 20 trillion yen of extra economic impact to the Japanese economy. The third pillow is uh, super tourism. As you know, uh, now we are seeing many, many non-Japanese foreign travelers uh, visiting Japan. The growth is extremely good. Uh, we have seen massive growth of inbound tourism uh, from Asia and uh, from uh, other parts of the world as well. The government goal was to reach 20 million by 2020. We have already achieved that goal. And now what we are proposing to government is to target 100 million inbound travelers annually. And now 
partially because of that, Japanese government changed their target from 20 million inbound tourists to 60 million. <clears throat> we already have made many, many uh, proposals to the government as well as ruling party, LDP. Last year, we made uh, 38 very concrete political proposals. Many of them were kind of seriously considered or even adopted uh, by a Japanese government, and we are very, very proud of it. For example, the privacy protection, the uh, digital fast policy, those are the outcome of our very uh, strong proposal uh, to the Japanese government. We also made many presentations uh, to the government as well as the ruling party. Uh, and uh, we are actively participating to the government meetings. We uh, participated more than 100 uh, the government meetings last year. And I think it is not exaggeration to say that Jane became one of the most uh, future thinking, most active uh, economic lobbying group and organization uh, in Japan. So uh, we are very, very proud of uh, what we have uh, achieved uh, in 2016, uh, but to make further growth and really uh, advance the Japanese uh, re uh, deregulations and, and reform a Japanese industrial structure, I think we need more help. Uh, so I hope uh, you will be able to participate in one way or another to our activities. Thank you. So I've tried to explain to you the several activities that are being initiated under Jane, but for the sake of the Japanese industry and society, we will continue to make great contributions. Now let me switch gears and talk about NEST, New Economy Summit. Time flies, and this is the fifth time we're having NEST. And the substance is now extremely enriched since the inaugural meeting. NES was the original acronym for New Economy Summit, but we want to make a nest of innovators in Tokyo, and that's why we changed the acronym to NEST, with T representing Tokyo as well. Last year, Estonia's then Prime Minister, who has already retired, Prime Minister Roybas came, and Androids, uh, Andy Rubin, and 3D Robotics CEO, Mr. Anderson, came as world-class innovators. And they delivered extremely provocative and stimulus talks. And this year's program is even more exciting than last year's, hopefully, for you to enjoy. And since this morning, I believe you enjoy the Venture Capital Session and the Nest Startup Challenge, the Pitch Session. So this is a very global conference, and insightful discussions are taking place at Nest. During the next two days, today and tomorrow, there will be 15 sessions and more than 40 speakers who are truly well-known and authorities will be coming up to the stage. Circular economy, video distribution, AI, drone, fintech, rideshare, or autonomous drive, life science, and various initiatives and subject matters that are extremely attractive will be debated. We have wonderful keynote speakers. Today we will have Mr. Drew Houston from Dropbox, and tomorrow Mr. Tom Kelly is going to take the floor as the keynote speaker. So you have something to be excited about. What's in our minds? Now, it's the evolution of technology and speed of innovation, which of course is accelerating ever faster. And the pace of acceleration is dramatically much higher than we had originally predicted. 
For example, take artificial intelligence, for example, and there will be much debate to take place at NEST, but the there is the word of singular theory. Will AI exceed the human intelligence? What would be the social impact? And what are some of the concerns that we have to take into consideration? We will have to think about these ex uh, issues from various angles. In regard to the basis of artificial intelligence, this is, of course, data. And when we look at the accumulated amount of data, then we see that this is accelerating tremendously. Uh, in the year 2000, it was said that the amount of uh, the world's digital data was 6.2 exabytes. But as indicated in this graph, in the year 2020, this will increase to 40 zettabytes. Now, when I entered this business, I didn't even know what a zettabyte was. At any rate, there's an explosive amount of data that is available. And by processing through artificial intelligence, it will be possible not to just be equivalent to humans, but will be able to invent and discover things which humans had been unable to do up until now. AI does not have the prejudice or preconceived notions that human beings have. Therefore, a lot of new innovation can be expected to real be realized, and services using this will possibly include many services which we cannot even imagine now. Meanwhile, when it comes to the subject of big data, this is a very important point. In Japan, it's necessary to look at how to utilize big data, and so uh, legislation will become very important in this area. In that sense, last year, uh, there was uh, the law uh, uh, that was deliberated upon for the utilization of big data by uh, the private sector and the public sector. And uh, I would like to add that we have been involved in this effort. In addition to artificial intelligence, there's the Internet of Things. And uh, there's uh, voice recognition uh, used in various types of hardware. Furthermore, there's robotics and various forms of Internet of Things are evolving rapidly. And this may change greatly the structure of society, and so therefore we must focus our attention on this. Furthermore, here in Japan, frankly speaking, this is somewhat of a taboo phrase to use, but there is a shift from a economy of possession to a sharing economy. A major shift seems to be taking place right now. There's Airbnb, where regular homes are being used as lodging facilities. There's Lyft, Uber, and mm, Cab Kareem. And we have the uh, presidents of those companies participating. But when it comes to transportation through the sharing economy, how is this is going to create changes. It's not just the matter of a shift from taxis to ride sharing, the design of roads, the design of parking lots, and beyond that, autonomous driving. It may well be that uh, there's going to be a shift from possessing cars because possession of cars may just be a luxury for a limited number of people, and most of the people may well use car sharing. That is most likely to occur. And this will have a tremendous impact on s the infrastructure in society. And uh, there will be a difference between countries who embark upon this and those who do not. And so what the differences will be needs to be debated. I must repeat myself, but when it comes to ride sharing or autonomous drive, the gasoline engine cars appeared at one point in history, but we may see even greater social impact as a result of all of these trends taking place. The city design, the design of homes and lifestyles may also be greatly influenced by all of this. Furthermore, 
In order to move forward with innovation like this, it's necessary to look at what the country of Japan has to do and what the city of Tokyo has to do. Because what is important is that society and culture are going to require the openness to accept diversity. This is going to be a tremendously important thing from here onwards. When we look at the world, we see that there are trends to be more closed off that we observe. Although such trends are starting, it's necessary for both Tokyo and for Japan as a whole to look at this as an opportunity to be more open. And I do believe that this is a necessary thing for us. At any rate, what is happening right now is unlike the marginal innovations of the past. Rather, it may well be that this will cause tremendous changes uh, in society itself five years ahead or ten years ahead or fifteen to twenty years ahead. It may well be that it will be truly like a world of what we see in science fiction now that will come about. So we at the Japan Association of New Economy Want, is looking forward to see what's around the corner and we would like to carry our activities with that in mind and in the new economy summit we hope that you will all be aware of what you would see around the corner and it may well be that what is around the corner may be a completely different landscape than what we are used to seeing now so we must imagine all of this, and with that in mind, I hope that you will be able to participate in the various sessions that will be useful for you. At the New Economy Summit, our theme is Hello Future. And to repeat myself, through innovation, it may be very tough to face all of these changes. You may be wondering what you need to do. That's one way of looking at it. But then you could look at this as an opportunity to challenge new things. That is another possibility that could po be pursued. At any rate, 10 years ahead or 20 years ahead, society is going to be completely different from what it is now. It will be going through a tremendous change. And so as we head towards the future, we hope that uh, the Japan Association of New Economy will continue to uh, carry out its activities. And we have a day and a half of this summit, but we hope that you will be able to enjoy the sessions. Thank you very much for your attention.